What's going on? Welcome to this ride along video. I want to talk to you about the continuously variable transmission, the CVT, and why it is so hated. If you've been looking for a car, to buy a car recently, you would have definitely seen that a lot of your choices, if not most of them, had CVTs in them. It's very hard nowadays to find, especially a small car that does not have a CVT in it. But if you ask anybody, would they recommend a CVT? Most people are going to tell you no, and most people will tell you that they suck. I'm here to tell you why everybody hates this transmission. Not all of this is opinion. Nissan has been using CVTs for a long time and they have at least three class action lawsuits that I know of for different problems with their you know, CVTs. Honda had a problem with their CVTs where the cars would actually feel like they were parked when they were not. Subaru had issues with this is older issues, but they had issues with the cars with the CVTs actually stalling. So these transmissions can have their mechanical issues and their you know, really big problems that require recalls, but it's not all about that. One of the problems with CVTs is that the performance is just lackluster. If you're driving a CVT, you might notice that when you're taking off from a standstill, the car's kind of sluggish. It goes slow and it takes a while to get up to, to speed. Low gear ratios are actually the least efficient in, in the CVT. And for that reason, the cars are actually tuned to not overdo it in those ratios. That's one of the reasons why, to protect the transmission and to stay economical. Toyota started adding a fixed first gear to their CVTs so that when you're going from a standstill to up to 25 miles per hour, you're actually using a physical gear and not the CVT. Then when you pass 25 miles an hour, the CVT kicks in and it can stay efficient and it'll you know, theoretically last longer and save you on gas. But that's not the only reason why their you know, performance of a CVT is lackluster. It's a very boring feeling. We're all used to actually driving a, a transmission that rises and lowers in RPMs as it changes gears. And we, we've gotten used to that you know, momentary shift in, in RPMs and it's a very traditional feel. With a CVT, you don't get that at all. Uh, and that's the reason why a lot of manufacturers are actually adding sh fake shift points to their CVTs so that they can simulate that traditional feel so that the drivers don't feel like the car just they don't get that rubber band feeling which is very common in CVTs. Another issue is that CVTs can be unpredictably loud. There's a lot of external factors that can dictate how the computer manages the CVT to actually output the power that it needs to output. Things like the outside temperature, the engine temperature, the altitude above sea level, the grade that you're on, all these things can put the CVT in a spot along the RPMs where it kind of just stays there and it's louder than you would expect it to be doesn't happen all the time but if you hit the accelerator pedal in just the right spot you might get stuck for a little bit as you're accelerating in this area and the rpms that just drones and it just doesn't sound very nice cvts can have a lot of inherent problems and one big one that bit nissan a little bit is poor cooling if you don't have the proper cooling heat is the killer of any transmission but it's even more important to have a properly cooled transmission if it's a cvt because CVT has very few moving parts and it usually fails in a catastrophic way. Overheating will deteriorate that transmission fluid. That transmission fluid will in turn just break everything inside the, the transmission case and there goes catastrophic failure. Because the transmission is so simple, it has a couple of points of failure. You know, you're talking about two pulleys, two variators and a chain in between them. If any of those three things goes, that's it. The transmission does not work. Your car is dead on the side of the road. I feel also that these transmissions are very, very reliant on a good tune because it's not as simple as just going from one you know, gear to the next. There's a lot of things that affect where those pulleys need to be and because of that, the CVTs can actually suffer from jerkiness, they can suffer from like the loudnesses that I was telling you about. A poor tune can actually make or break a CVT. The transmission is very sensitive to things that would normally not be too crazy on a regular automatic. And I'm talking about a dirty MAF sensor, a dirty filter. These things can actually throw the CVT out of whack. You know, with a regular car, those things are bad, but the effects of having a dirty MAF or a you know dirty filter or something like that is just not as pronounced as it's gonna be on a CVT. The CVT may behave very unpredictably if everything else that feeds it is not in perfect working order. If you do manage to apply too much torque to the CVT under certain conditions, you can very easily score the variators. Once you do that, the CVT will actually slip, the chain will slip. If you feel that slipping and that's happening, you know, that's obviously a really bad thing that eventually will lead to catastrophic failure. So that's another inherent problem with the CVT, that it is restricted by torque. And to go with all of that is the fact that regular automatics 
are actually just way more forgiving if you forget to change the you know transmission fluid at the regular interval or if you have been doing a lot of spirited driving and you've heated up the transmission a little bit um, they're just more forgiving the cvt requires optimal input all the time to operate and not break not to mention the fact that if a regular automatic has an issue, a lot of times you can actually still use the car with that issue. Uh, it might miss a gear completely, something like that. Uh, it might take a while to go from park to reverse, whatever the case might be, but you might still be able to use the transmission. You might need a new transmission or it might need to be rebuilt, but you can still get to and from work while you're trying to figure things out. With a CVT, they often fail in a catastrophic way. You don't have that luxury of being able to just drive the car around if you need to, to get to and from work while you scrape up the money to get it fixed or whatnot. And that's the perfect segue into the next section. CVTs are expensive to fix. One main problem is that it's a technology that not a lot of mechanics have a lot of experience with. You might not have a, a mechanic wor worth his or her salt anywhere around you, anywhere close, that could actually work on the CVT. You might actually have to take it to the dealer to get the work done, and you know you're gonna pay a premium at the dealer. This is, of course, if you're out of warranty, you have to do these repairs. So with a regular automatic, it might cost you a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars to get it completely, you know, rebuilt or fixed. So if you're keeping a car long term, and that's the difference between you having a car and not having a car, that's not too bad. But with a CVT, now we're talking three to ten thousand dollars. That's a big difference. And the reason is because, like I said before, when CVTs fail, they fail catastrophically. You sure you can't just fix this or fix that. You have to actually replace the entire transmission. Parts are hard to find for them. And again, you, you're hard pressed to find a, a good mechanic that knows how to work on them. For this reason, it costs so much to get your transmission fixed. So that kind of rolls into the next point that I wanted to make. And that's that CVTs are supposed to be cheaper. So what's going on here? Well, they are cheaper. They're cheaper for the manufacturer. They have very few moving parts. They're much easier to manufacture and they're more economical than a regular automatic transmission. For this reason, more and more you know, manufacturers are actually going to CVTs in their car. They can actually charge you less money for the car, which makes them more competitive. So a CVT is gonna be good for the manufacturer, but that doesn't necessarily mean that those savings, that when you go and buy the car and it's a thousand, two thousand dollars less than what you thought it would be, that doesn't mean that you're not gonna end up paying that money a different way. And one of those ways is through an extended warranty. If you buy an extended warranty, now you're adding $2,000, maybe even more to the price of the car. A lot of people, when they do that, they'll actually wrap the extended warranty into the life of the loan, which means you'll pay even more. If you save $2,000, uh, you know, because you got a car with a CVT when you bought the car, but you have to buy a $2,000 extended warranty, you obviously didn't save $2,000. And another thing, if you're keeping the car long-term and you have to replace the transmission after your warranty expires, and that transmission will cost you $6,000 to fix. Well, now you're, we're talking about a lot of extra money that this cheap transmission is gonna end up costing you. And as far as being more economical on gas, well, I just don't really buy that too much. This car that I'm in right now, I average 22 and a half miles per gallon. That's not impressive at all. Granted, it is about the same for all the competition. They're, they're all midsize SUVs like this one that, that are not hybrids are all about the same. But if you're comparing it to a you know, mid-size SUV that has a six cylinder engine and a regular automatic transmission, and that's got about the same gas mileage as my car with a CVT, well, then what the hell's the point in having a CVT in it, right? You're not realizing those savings in fuel costs. So I don't like that argument that they're more economical because I just don't buy them. So those are the reasons why people hate CVT so much. They're good for the manufacturers, but not so much for the consumers. But I wouldn't let that deter me from buying a new car. The cars, the CVTs are getting much, much better. Most of these problems that I described are problems of the past. That's not to say that a CVT does not have, uh, you know, still have its issues. And I wouldn't prefer to have a car that has an equivalent regular automatic, but it is becoming increasingly more difficult to find a certain model without a CVT. So we have to kind of learn with it and the good thing is that they are getting better. It should be telling that a company like Toyota had to go and add a physical first gear to their CVT. And if you have to go through those lengths to fix the transmission, then you obviously knew that that transmission is inherently flawed. You have to do a lot to get them to be reliable in bigger cars. And that's the reason why they've had so many issues with them over the years. The fact that 
Subaru actually put it in this car, which is very, you know, relatively heavy and it's a midsize SUV and can actually tow 5,000 pounds, means that they have faith in the transmission. The fact that they put the same transmission in their sports car with the WRX with a CVT, that, that should tell you that they have faith and that they are getting better. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you for joining me, for going on this ride along with me. Let me know in the comment section if I hit all the points, if you already own a CVT, or if you have another grief about CVTs that I did not mention, let me know in the comment section. If you appreciate the video, make sure you give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'll see you next video. Take care.